Hello, this is Rachel from The Nerdy Homeschooler. Today, I am excited to share with you fifth grade Math with Confidence, the newest release in the Math with Confidence series. Thank you to The Well-Trained Mind for gifting me with this fifth grade Math with Confidence set so that I can share it with all of you guys. We're gonna take a deep dive, look inside to help you guys know what to expect um, and what differs from some of the early levels. So let's dive right in. fifth grade math with confidence. Like the other levels, it has a nice meaty instructor's guide. And then like levels three and four, fifth grade comes with two student books so that the student book isn't too thick or heavy for your student to cart around. So those are labeled A and B. So you can just put B on a shelf until you're later on into the year and just work with book A at the beginning. So let's dive in. We're gonna chat about what's similar, what's different, and overall what to expect. My goal with these videos is always to help parents to assess whether or not this is going to be a good fit for their family and their needs. So this is fifth grade math with confidence. This is a hands-on approach to fifth grade. With a lot of homeschool curriculums, you will see as you're getting into upper elementary, middle, and high school, you'll see curriculum switching to online instruction or independent student learning and not as much teacher interaction. But Math with Confidence um, does not make that switch. The parent is still involved. And they explain some of that reasoning that they really see a lot of value in involved teaching and parent-involved teaching in the homeschool setting when it comes to fifth grade math. Now that isn't gonna fit every family's needs, but for a lot of families, that can be a really great option and a great way to do math. So here are some of the topics covered in fifth grade math. We're multiplying and dividing multi-digit numbers, adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers with different denominators, dun, dun, dun. Multiplying and dividing fractions and mixed numbers. We get into operations with decimals, fraction and decimal word problems. So very deep into our fractions and decimals and actually using them in different ways. We're using fractions and decimals to express measurements and solve measurement problems. We do some volume geometry, some line graphs, the coordinate plane, and finding mean and median of a data set. So these are kind of our key topics for the year. Um, and there are going to be a few things that are different in fifth grade. One of the things that's different that you'll notice if you've used other levels of math with confidence is that in the student book, there is more written information. So like you'll see right here in the B section of this page, you have a written definition of what's the associative property and you'll have examples of that. So we have some of that teaching written down in the book. Now this is not at all intended to be the full lesson or the full explanation of the associative property. The teacher is still needed, but this is a way to transition the child into learning how to do more of their own math reading, into having their own reference within the textbook that they can go back to if they need a reminder. Um, and as you're introduced to fifth grade, you're, you're actually expected to teach your child and you're guided into teaching your child the skills of how to read math instruction because it's different from you know just reading a book and how to read examples and how to use examples um, to make them helpful for you. So that's one difference. Another difference is that there are now unit reference pages at the back of the book. So your student has these reference pages um, that cover, basically, it's a repeat of that information that was on their lessons, but a summary page of, you know, all of the instruction that they learned from that unit on these reference pages right here so that your student is learning the skill of, oh, if they need a reminder, they can turn back to the reference pages. And there are reference pages in the back of student book A as well as B. So once you've moved on to B, you very well might want to take out these reference pages and put them in your student's, you know, master binder or whatever you're using um, for your student um, as just their master information for the school year, which is something I do recommend having as you get students into upper elementary and middle school um, and keeping those there so that they can kind of have this summary of the main key skills that they've been learning in math. 
Another difference is that you no longer have a whole list of picture books. Instead, there is one book that is used throughout the year for the enrichment lessons. Just one book, which is called How Many Guinea Pigs Can Fit on a Plane? Answers to Your Most Clever Math Questions. And so you're just reading a few pages of that book each, each enrichment lesson. You are still expected to have some manipulatives. You need some small counters that you'll be using as basically markers for games. Uh, for the most part, they recommend having fraction bars and fraction circles, but if you don't want to buy these physical fraction bars and fraction circles, or you can't buy them, or you just don't think your student is really going to need that much practice with visual fractions, they give you black line masters in the back of the book. So you can just print copies of these if you're just going to use them a little bit to share them with your child. You can use the fraction circles, fraction bars from the back of the book. Also. Pro tip, if it's kind of hard to hold this book on top of your copier and copy these pages, you can also go to the Well-Trained Minds website to get um, download the Black Line Masters and print from the PDF. So that's another option to make it a little bit easier if you're using the paper ones, which I'm just gonna say for me and for my student, I would envision we'd probably just use the paper ones because I don't think he would need so much of the physical demonstration of it. I don't think we would use them all lot so I probably wouldn't invest in the physical ones um, but for a child who needs more of that physical demonstration of what fractions are and how they work you definitely that might be worth investing in the plastic in the um, more tactile ones um, they have some centimeter cubes they want you to have for learning about volume a little bit of play money ruler protractor Playing cards and dice, you use playing cards and dice a lot in Math with Confidence. I've been impressed how many different games and how many ways we can use playing cards to just practice math facts and to practice um, doing math problems. It's great. Uh, so you have your materials and then it is divided into units. There are 16 units and you can see right here the different topics for each unit. So they're not all exactly the same length. Um, but you could expect, you know, a unit might take roughly about two weeks-ish to complete. Some will take a little more. Uh, and this is intended to cover one whole school year. And, you know, doing five lessons a week, it'll cover a pretty typical school year. It might be a little less than 36 weeks, might be a little more, depending on how many days you're doing four or five days of math, um, you know. A lot of school weeks don't end up having five days because of a public holiday or something of that sort. Another key thing I want to point out is memory work. Now they have in the Black Line Masters a memory work master list. Now they have in the Black Line Masters a memory work master list and this is definitely something that I recommend printing or copying. And they suggest that you could post this on a wall near your student's work area. I don't tend to post things on my walls so much about school these days, but this is something that you could put in your student's master binder, something that they can refer to and refer back to. But this, these are vocabulary and concepts that your student is intended to memorize. And every day you have a, just a really quick memory work drill to introduce your lesson. So as every math curriculum does, level five begins with some review of previously taught skills. So if you have a student coming in who didn't use Math with Confidence before, this might be especially important and especially useful for you. Uh, but even if you're coming back after summer break, you know, you can count on starting with some review. So you have your memory work. Here we're going over memory work about the terms for different numbers in a division problem. Then we have our warm up activity, A, we have another activity with reviewing mental di division. So these are your teaching activities you do in an interactive way with your child. You're sitting with your child and then they have their independent practice and review in their student book. So you can always expect that the activities, some of them might be hands on and they might involve other manipulatives, but there will be some page dedicated to your lesson activities. So this is something interactive that you are doing with your child. There's information on here that you're discussing with your child, you know, having that discussion, working together, making sure they understand what's going on here. That's that page. Then you're letting your child fly. You're letting them work alone, typically, for the second page, the practice page, and the 
review page of the lesson. And they actually have these little symbols here to help you remember that, that the two people symbol is, that's your teaching part that you're doing together. Then practice and review is what your child would be expected to do by themselves. But then, remember, you need to come back and check their work. There's no point in having your child just do math without you actually checking their work, making sure they're getting it correct. And you will find the answers to all problems and all pages right here in your teacher guide. So I'm gonna move way over here toward later on in the book just to give you a look at some lessons that are not review lessons. So we have lesson nine over here, plot points on the coordinate plane. And we have our memory work. What does LCM stand for? Least common multiple. And then four multiples of eight. Then we have a warm up activity, which is following directions to find the treasure. All right, so we have that on the activity page so you can see how clear it is. You have your little diagram right here. You have your diagram right here. Then we have some information, ordered pairs and the coordinate plane. What do these terms mean? Um, we're introducing the coordinate plane in this lesson. You have everything scripted out for you right here. So you're introducing this whole topic in B and then in C, you're doing some work with a coordinate plane, identifying the ordered pair of coordinates for points D through G from this plane right here. Again, they have the diagrams in the teacher guide for you. Then you have a little game playing hot and cold on the coordinate plane, which is right here in a D. And then you your student has their practice and their review. So they have their page of practice from this lesson's topics, and then they have their review. Something to note is that review is going to be on other topics. And this I really appreciate about this curriculum. And it's a part of many well done math curriculums that we're not doing only points on a coordinate plane. We are also practicing our measurement conversions. We're finding our missing numbers and equations. We're doing some multiplication. We're doing a word problem right here. So we are getting a quick review of a variety of things. Now, something I would point out about Math with Confidence, they have their reviews. Really, their reviews do not have a lot of problems. If you compare this to some other upper elementary curriculums like Saxon, Abeka, those type of curriculums are the ones where a lot of times parents will say, okay, do every other problem, do every odd problem, do every even problem, only do half the problems. This is not really the kind of curriculum where you will wanna do half the problems. For the most part, you're gonna to wanna to do all the problems because they really hit the sweet spot of, yeah, they have problems, they got some work for you to do, but it's not a lot. They do give you consistent practice on all these skills, but it's not such an overwhelming amount that it's gonna take forever and you can't realistically do all the problems every day. Um, and do remember that some of the review is happening through these, these quick memory work and warm up activities. So not always is all of the review in the book itself, although more of the review is in the book by the fifth grade level. There's less oral review, but there still is some oral warm up activities that you're doing with your student. So for me, by this stage, I would be expecting that the time I'm spending with my student is 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, depending on the lesson itself. Um, but the amount of time that they will spend on working by themselves will be a little bit longer than that uh, because it just does take time to solve longer and more challenging uh, problems. Now, if you have any further questions about math with confidence, do go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. I will do my best to answer them as best as I can. Thank you to The Well-Trained Mind for sending this to me so I could chat about it in this nerdy homeschool video. Make sure you guys subscribe for more. Bye.